Oh, when the saints come dragging in. Oh, when the saints come dragging in. Point to those people that are coming in now and say, hello, saints. Everybody come on in and everybody stand up. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. My name, my name is written in the Lamb's book of life. God hears my prayers. Sin is dead in my body, but the Spirit is life in all things. In all things, I am more than a conqueror in Christ. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. God is my provider. All my needs are met. God is my provider. All my needs are met. God is my provider. All my needs are met. I have no fear, dread, anxiety, or depression. I walk in power, love, and a sound mind. I have the mind of Christ. I take every thought captive and think on good things. My mind is renewed. I am proving what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God in my life. We are the body of Christ, members one with another. Demons tremble at the word of God. Together we put 10,000 to flight and the enemies of God fall. We serve the one true living God. We serve the one true living God. We serve the one true living God. I want us to stop and give him praise right now. Will you do that? We serve the one true living God. Jesus, our Savior, is King of kings and Lord of lords. God is. God is good. Give him praise. Let's worship.
Hallelujah. Let's just worship him. Come on, give him a shout of praise. Come on, tell him how wonderful he is. Tell him how good he is. Father, we love you. We thank you for your presence. Where would we be without you, Lord? Hallelujah. Come on. I want you to lift your hands. And I want you in your own way to just thank the Lord right where you are. Father, thank you for saving our soul. Thank you for freeing us. Thank you for setting us free. Thank you for healing our bodies. Father, thank you for your goodness. Thank you for the salvation of our homes and our loved ones. We just thank you, Jesus. The name above every name, we worship you. You're holy, you're true, you're good. There's none like you, Lord. And we worship you. Thank you. You know, I thought, I'm thinking of the scripture where it says that God says in Psalm 22 that he inhabits the praises of his people. Amen? Let's sing that last part, the, the, the name above every name. And I want you, as you're singing this, as your hands are lifted, I want you to know that you, God himself is being inhabited in your praise. Amen? Can we praise him? Can we give him some glory? Go ahead. Hallelujah. And every trophy will be laid down at his feet. All there is a day that reigns above all others. Jesus Christ, the King above all kings. And I worship. You know, the scripture says, never forsake yourself when you're in the assembly of the brethren. Amen? Amen? And this is good. When we come together, we're a collective body, and it's a wonderful thing. Well, today, I'm very excited. I have a wonderful one. We have wonderful guests coming in. Oh, what are we doing now? Oh, we're going to dismiss the kids. Well, we're going to dismiss the kids. <laughs> Before we do that, we're going to dismiss the little ones. So you guys are free to go. That's half the church right there. <laughs> Amen. Come on, give them a, some praise. Well, give the Lord praise. Hey, you, just stand up. Right. you know, the kids are our future, amen? Yes, praise God. Hey, how are you? All right. Well, today, really excited today. I have a privilege and I have a wonderful joy to introduce a new friend um, in the kingdom of God, amen? And his name is Brother Jimmy Muskrat. He goes by... Hawaii Five O. He goes by Five O. It's pretty cool, but it's a wonderful thing. I love when God does things. He He sets up divine connections, and then you know I I got to meet him uh, through Brother Larry Lum, and I read the article about this wonderful book of heaven, and we're going to get into all that in, in a moment. But I was reading it, and I was just so filled with joy, seeing all the wonderful things that God was doing. God is using him all over all over the nations, and all especially over uh, the Native American nations. Amen. And it's just been a wonderful thing. And so I have the joy and the privilege privilege of introducing my brother. So Brother Jimmy Muskrat, come on in. And he's got his wonderful team. Now, here we go. Holy Spirit, help me. Starla and Jimmy and Becky and Cheryl, right? All right. Praise God. They're all here today. So without further ado, I give you Brother Jimmy Muskrat. Amen. Team, come on up. Recently, we just got done with 30,000 miles in four months. We got six more missions to go. 
But it's not about one. It's about the team working together. This crew right here has been delivered from meth and drugs. And they're amazing. It's an honor and privilege to travel with them. But I don't look at their name. I exercise their gifts. I've been sober, drug-free, 28 years in the name of Jesus. They said, are we, are we only after natives? I said, no, we're after whosoever. Amen. Jesus died for all. Amen. But God has sent us to tribes, dark places, and share the gospel. You know, this right here is no accident. What God puts together, you know, we obey and go. You know, and uh, I didn't put this team together for today. God put this team together today. And they're a blessing. They're amazing. Uh, I, I just thank the Lord. What great testimony that, you know, uh, what God laid on my heart, you know, and I hope you're ready to hear the truth, Amen. the power. Amen. We're living in the last days. Yes. Jesus coming any time. I said, go, I give you see Jesus. I would do it. It's all, huh? Do law, I give you see Jesus. I would do it. It's the huh? I'm hungry for Jesus. Let's eat. Amen. And what the Lord leading me to do, I'm a prophet of all nations, and this is what He's leading me to do: the trail of joy. I'm one of the original writers, bike riders of the Trail of Tears, 1984, 14 years old, from Cherokee, North Carolina to Tulsa, Oklahoma. I rode a bicycle all the way. But I'm not coming back and talking about the Trail of Tears. Amen. I'm coming back reversing the curse in the name of Jesus Amen. and telling about the Trail to Calvary is what's going to change this nation. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Woo! Yeah. Praise God. This is our band right here. Our band never complains. <laughs> Long as you got electric, you get to hear our band. You got a mic? I don't know. Can we just take one of these? Yes. Can we just take the mic? The, are those? These two in the back. Okay, these? Yeah. These guys are anointed. And you know, Pastor, I don't remember in between coming here to Fort Smith from Stillwell. Their fellowship was so powerful, we laughed all the way. They still laughing in the bathroom this morning, rejoicing. <laughs> We're laughing in the office, rejoicing. It was so powerful. Yeah. Oh, man, we had an upper room. Yes. Amen. 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 And I, I thank the Lord, and they're amazing. And, uh, Make uh, sure all their mics are all right. Check. Check, check. Saw a talk, joint, no, here she He's counting in Cherokee. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> but uh, I, I think God just wanted us to be. Yes, I'm And uh, you know what? We come, we come to just, uh, it's an honor and privilege to be here. It's an honor and privilege to carry this everywhere. Also, this is going to Mexico. Yes, yes. Am I? Right. Yes. But listen to this word because we love this song. I can't. I don't know how you showed up, maybe your face up, but we go to tribes where they think there's no hope. 13 suicides a month. Depression. 11, 12 year old alcoholics. The enemy is really destroying our tribes. But God is sending us there in the name of Jesus to tell them there is hope. There is a way. Not tradition, not medicine, man. Jesus Christ is the way and the only way. Amen. So keep us in prayer because we got six big missions coming up. But whatever happens in us, he gets all the praise and all the glory. Y'all ready, saints? See, they're no, no longer going to the drug house. They're no longer on meth. They're on fire for Jesus. Yes. They're on fire for Jesus. Yes. So is this band. Get loaded if we can. A 
thought that number one would surely be me. I thought I would be what I wanted to be. I thought I would be all I seek and say, but I can't even walk without you holding my hand I thought that I could do a lot on my own I thought I could make it all along I thought of myself as a mighty big man but I can't even walk without you holding my hand come on amen praise God chickens anymore or spend time in county jail. The Lord said it. I don't know if you ever heard of Bell, Oklahoma. The old saying, don't go in there at night time. I'm one of the bellboys that Jesus saved. 
But I got saved the year 2000. When I came back to Bell, it was a whole different Hawaii 5-0. Amen. Amen. And I don't deserve it. But I'm giving it my all. I turned 54 this year. 21 years. He's been using me in a mighty way. But it was only Jesus that crucified that old man. It's only the blood of Jesus that washed my sins away. Medicine man's not the way. Tradition's not the way. Jesus is the way. So, this is your testimony, too. You know? This ain't no funeral home. This is the house of God. Amen. Come to sing to him, praise him. Yes. Because we're getting ready to go dark places. Oh. These guys are amazing. Yep. I wish y'all could just ride in the van with us. <laughs> when she she drove first, when she hollered, Sarah, you know what that is? <laughs> Our mirror's not on the windshield. I have to grab it and hold it like this. <laughs> hey, we're from the Reds. <laughs> so Tell them time. the real story. 5 you know, everybody knows what Siri is, right? <laughs> Five-O was hollering for Sarah because he got lost. He was like, Sarah, help me. So, so he was saying, Sarah. And I was like, who is he talking about? He was saying, Sarah. So now on the way up here in the van, the, the van, the rear view fell off. So I'm like, Sarah, rear view. So he'll pick the rear view off the floor and he'll hold it up. But it, it's an annoyance. It's awesome to be from where we came from. And I'll just tell you a little bit about myself. I was born and raised in a Baptist church. My grandfather preached. I was sitting in the pew, I mean in the pews with my mom. If I moved or did anything, I got pinched. You know, you know what grannies and moms do when you don't want them to help them with something. You know, I was that kid. I was the stopping kid. So you're gonna get it. Anyway, when I was 12 years old, I was the youngest of all, out of all the girls. Out of all the boys, I mean, because there was no girls around my age. Twelve years old, I was introduced to methamphetamine. Twelve years old. I was fully addicted. The first time I tried methamphetamine. Because as a child, I could have 
world that we live in, you either you don't really do anything halfway. You know, you're either jumping in all for Jesus or you're jumping in for the drug dealers, you know. I'm 11 days clean. Stop by and ask me where I've been, what's on my mind. They wonder why I'm not drinking, still painting this old town red. I tell them I'm serving Jesus now. And the old man is dead. Praise God, he might. Could you sing our testimony? Hey, let's stand and thank the Lord. Old man is dead. Oh, listen to our testimony.
sharing this stage, you know, and just obeying God all I did, you know, you know, he says, where are you all at? The Bible book is full. There you are. What well, no. I just felt glad to go there that day, the other day, and we just had church. Next I know, I end up over here. Amen. Amazing what God is doing yeah. with this book from heaven. I understand there's still tribes out there worship the Creator through animals and buffaloes and eagles without the word. Jesus is the way. There is no other way. Yeah. I was praying about today. What it ate on my heart? <sighs> and I, 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 I thank the Lord. When I looked at this, Wow. And only Jesus can make you say, wow. Then when the Holy Ghost takes over, wow. In Mark 2, I was looking at the first scripture, the last word in it, and this is what it said. It was noise that he was in the house. Uh, can I say that again? It was noise that he was in the house. When we come here, we make noise about Jesus. But to make more noise, we must learn more to make more noise. Woo! 
See, those kids left and went to the room to learn about Jesus so they can make more noise about Jesus. To make noise is not talk. To make noise is walk. You can talk to talk, but are you walking to walk? Woo! Let's get quiet in here. This band made noise about Jesus. We made noise coming all the way down here in the van. We laugh more than we talk. Starla was saying, beat the sheep, beat the sheep. <laughs> but did you know that you can make noise about Jesus in many ways? When you smile, you make noise about Jesus. Because when you read his word, the book of Proverbs says, a joyful heart is good medicine. I believe Sportsmith needs some good medicine. You see, we come and make noise about Jesus no matter what. This group used to run with the devil. They made noise about the devil. Their wicked life. But they had encounter with Jesus Christ. Now they're making noise about Jesus Christ. When we go to these tribes, we don't make noise about medicine or tradition. We make noise about Jesus because that's who's going to change our nation, our tribes, our community. It's, but what kind of noise are you making outside these four walls of this church? I don't want to know about the noise in here. I want to know about the noise you're making out there. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. When you get rooted in the word of God, we're still going to have storms and trials. But it's amazing that we still make noise for him no matter what. One day Jesus is coming. When I preached Rebecca's brother's funeral, I told him it's a celebration. I seen him. I was there. I seen him get saved. I heard rumors of Starler traveling around, around her car with a baseball bat. And want to whoop anybody that approached her car. Then I come and see her in the house of God, delivered and saved. Now she's making noise about Jesus. Cheryl was having a battle with many things, but the Lord showed up yesterday and showed her, I'm still there. I never give up. I have a covenant. You see, we got something to make noise about. We got something to be happy about no matter. We got something to rejoice about. Praise God. Hallelujah. Little Jimmy was in the drugs now, but the Lord delivered. It's amazing what the Lord can do. You see, you have a harvest outside the four walls, and you just seen what the Lord can do with the harvest. Yes. Amen. Woo! Yes, amen. Now, Chris, we're going for a deep swim. He said, Mark said in, in, in verse 2, And straight away many were gathered together, and so much that these were, there was no room to receive them. No, not so much about the door. And he preached the word into them. And they come to him 
bring in one sick of palsy, which was born of four. But when they could not come near into uh, him in the press, they uncovered the roof where he was. And when they had broken it up, they let down he that the bed were in the sick of the palsy laid. When Jesus saw their what? And he said unto the sick of Holy, Son, the sins be forgiven thee. That's the greatest thing that an ear can hear, that your sins have been forgiven. Amen. It don't matter who it is that's listening, the Lord can save anybody. See, when you get saved, you need some preaching and some teaching to make noise about Jesus. But don't be hearers, but, but doers. Amen. Here's where it goes deep. When they were on the way to the house where Jesus was preaching, they had an encounter with the cripple. Religious would just walk right past cripple. Amen. But these poor went to him. We can't heal you. We can't deliver you. But we know a man where we headed it that can. And we're going to carry you all the way to him. We're not giving up. We're not throwing a towel. We're going to get you there. Yes. When they cannot come to the door, sometimes somebody's a hindrance to somebody approaching the Lord. So we're not going that way. We're going to come to the ceiling. We're going to peel away till we get to Jesus. We're going to break it up till we get to Jesus. Oh, I tell you, when you get to Jesus, he didn't see good works. He didn't see singing. He seen faith. So, Holy Ghost, what did you want me to do with this? What did, how do you want this to come out? How was it? When you leave from here today, who can you go to? Do you know why we're saved? Somebody was a believer and carried our name to the altar and prayed for our salvation. We were way off in bondage. We were way off in wickedness. But somebody was serving Jesus and carried our name all the way to Jesus. Fort yeah. Smith got a lot of them that's crippled up. You don't have to go too far from here to see it. So, next service, who can you pick up and carry to the house of God? Amen. Down in Texas, this pastor left his church. He seen one of his elder sisters of the church on the sidewalk playing hopscotch. <laughs> this is a true story. He pulled over, rolled the window. Sister, what are you doing? You're too old to be hopping around like that. <laughs> she come up to the window. She said, Pastor, I got him beat. The deal is if I beat him, they come to church with me Sunday. <laughs> she made a noise about Jesus through hopscotch. <laughs> I say it right. On her deathbed, she gave pastor a list, would you pick up my route? <laughs> the Lord took her home. The pastor testified and said it took two buses and one van. Wow. 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 Two buses and one van. How the Lord can use one in a mighty way. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You see, the harvest is ready. Labors are few. 
And it's amazing. They carried Jesus all the way. And you ought to thank God for that person that carried your name all the way. See, Jesus never changed. He's still the same as yesterday, today, forever. That's what it says in Hebrew 13, 8. Jesus Christ, the same as yesterday, today, forever. Wow. See, we make noise about Jesus no matter what. Because it's a noise that they need to hear in these last days. Paul, you know, he told uh, Galatians 5, 7, you did run well who hindered you from obeying the truth. You know, I'm no longer a chunk of clay. I'm an instrument for the Lord now to use in a mighty way. He gets all the praise and all the glory, whatever happens. I like it the way we roll in that van. You know, I had to hold the mirror up. That's, the, oh, that's, that's amazing. The van's pretty rugged, but we're rich in the Lord. You see, we're all blessed. My, aren't we blessed? Amen. That I'm making a noise about Jesus. Thank God for my elders that sent me down and taught me to the word of God, took me to the word. They decided me to me. Where was this at, Muskrat? I did a ministry at nursing home for seven years, and I sat with bedridden all day. They taught me about faith. The wagon days, cleaning up at the creek, eating breakfast on the bank. Dirt floor, logs for pews, and candles, and a message. My, 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 how blessed we are today. <laughs> what if we had to ride in the wagon, clean up at the creek, and eat breakfast on the bank? <laughs> Lord said, well, my breakfast bank is at McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> Don't deserve, the Lord deserve all. Yeah. He's got me here for a reason. I'm a groundbreaker. I come to break ground in the name of Jesus. Because if you don't break ground, you can't throw the seed unless you break the ground. When God sends us to these tribes, we go break ground in the name of Jesus. The strongest medicine man was supposed to kill me in a building one time. They feared him. The tribe feared him because he was a strong medicine man. I preached the gospel 500 in the building. When I left, they were crying out to Jesus. Next day, they said, he wants to meet with you at his house. When I got there, he said, all I want to do is drink coffee with you. I come to the building to kill you yesterday. But when I came to the door, my heart melted. The story to this, the tribe's hearts melted in the 1800s. When it goes to Mexico, it's going to melt hearts. It's the word that cleans up this nation and our lives. He said, all I want to do is drink coffee with you. You're the real McCoy. What we're doing today is reversing the curse in the name of Jesus. Because all they talk about tribes is the treaties, treaties that the governor broke. But I want to talk about a covenant that Jesus never breaks. A covenant that I'll guarantee you is the truth. The covenant, the word of God. I tell you what, but, but agreement between two. Jesus will never fail. Jesus will never let us down. He's the one can stop suicide. He's the one can stop depression. Look what he did with this group right here. I tell you, he gets all the praise and all the glory. They told him, blessing you, who you are, you think your God can only forgive sins. Well, Jesus says, talk is cheap. Take up the bed and get up and walk. Jesus took care of him spiritually first before physically. Well, Holy Ghost, I don't understand. 
If I lay in bed a long time on side of the road, I want to leave it and walk away rejoicing. Well, if he did it that day, they would not recognize him. But when he did it that way and grabbed that bed and did it Lord's way, they recognized him because they said, yeah, that's him. See that bed? He laid in that bed. Look, he's rejoicing and walking. He's healing because he had an encounter with Jesus. It's amazing what Jesus can do today. Last year, I laid on my deathbed full of COVID, pneumonia, my lungs. My lungs were shutting down. And my daughter-in-law was crying and wanted to send me to the emergency room, to the machine. I said, no, I want to die right here with my family and my grandbabies around me. And at that night, it was the point where it's not too long, it's going to go. And next morning was Sunday. She heard something coming down the hallway. Jesus came by and said, get up. I got up walking down the hallway trembling, four weeks in bed, when it said that there's no hope. But I made a phone call to Jesus because Psalms 34, 15, his eyes upon the righteous, his ears open to the cry. I cried out to Jesus, and he came by and healed me. No matter what, I made a noise all the way to my deathbed. You see, there's a mission field here in Fort Smith. And every one of you has a part. But are you showing up to labor? Who can you go to when you leave from here? Who can you pick up and carry to the house of God? What kind of vehicle are you driving? How many you can load up? How many drug addicts you pass on the streets when you seen these testify what the Lord did to them? What he can do with Fort Smith. It's time to have a spiritual earthquake. See, the Lord is speaking. That how many today at the altar call that you can carry their names to the altar and pray for their salvation? They're not here. They're stubborn, hard-headed, stiff neck. Yeah. You know, a girl in Louisiana said, I'll never go to church. And church cannot get her to go to church. You know? She said, I won't go because too many pretenders in churches. I said, five, oh, do you have something to say to her? I said, yeah, I do. I got up to her and I said, you're right. She said, you agree with me? Yes, I do. The Bible says tares and wheat are going to grow together in the church, but there's a separation coming one day. I told her, so can I share something with you? She said, go ahead. I'd rather go to church with a few than go to hell with all of them. Because the people you're looking at cannot save your soul. They cannot change your life. Only Jesus can. You, when you go to the house of God, we come to serve the Lord. What is it I can do for you today? Today, that's the word he laid on my heart. Because Fort Smith's a big, big mission field. I believe he can pack this church where they'll sit on the floor. They'll so hungry. I don't care if you don't have a chair. I'm just glad to be here. Just give me a hard floor. Because I'm no longer in the drug house. I'm no longer in bondage. I'm in the house of God. Amen. Jesus healed the man in this chapter. And he can heal me and the others. See, what we're doing... It's going to the tribes and take the land back from Satan in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Billy Graham prophesied about natives in 1975, said that there were going to be sleeping giants waking up. You're looking at a giant that just woke up. 
But I disciple and I train and I help others grow in the Lord. And that's a lot of work. That's commitment no matter what. I love them. I love every one of them. They're just amazing. Just ride with this 20 miles. We just laugh all the way. We rejoice because it's good medicine. You know, fellowship, you see, one accord is powerful. Am I? Did you know that Tennessee never came back? They never called me back, 35,000 members. When I got out of the van at the hotel, the leaders met me. They said, we're going to take you to the right places and keep you from the wrong places, brother. They called the wrong speaker. I said, what are you talking about? You see that bar across the road? That's the wrong place. We're taking you to the right places. Then the Holy Ghost starts speaking to me. I had no fellowship at the catfish restaurant, no one accord. So I, I like John 16, 13. That's a stop sign right there. So I waited. And this is what I was led through the spirit. When they brought me back to the hotel, he told me, don't walk in the hotel. Go walk in that bar and sit down. The leader stood there just like. <laughs> I walked in and sat down, and he come up and said, what do you have? I'll take cold pop. You got cold pop. It's filled with smoke and everything. You ain't from around here, are you? Mm -mm. You a preacher? Yeah. Well, preachers don't do that around here. Where are you speaking at? The other side of that cotton field. I'm coming tomorrow. It's amazing when a bar owner gets saved, the bar shuts down and turns to a church. <laughs> and guess what? I got to lead the medicine man to Jesus of South Dakota. Amen. All his followers filled the hallways of the hospital parking lot. And they said, what's he doing here? That was he white man's way. The hospital said, well, you need it here. When I got to him, he said, would you lead me to the Lord Jesus Christ? Amen. And the revival broke out. Breaking ground's a lot of work. But the ground needs to be broken at Fort Smith. That's right. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Everybody's riding on too busy. Right. Don't got time. But when that trumpet blows... When Jesus comes, and you think good work's going to save you, you're going to open hell wide open. That's right. You think Sangin's going to save you. Only Jesus can save you. That's right. Only his blood can wash your sins away. Yeah. This past few months, I lost 130 pounds in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I quit insulin and diabetic pills in the name of Jesus. Yeah. I'm fasting and believing the Lord Jesus Christ for my healing. Amen. Amen. I was 340 pounds. And pastor, I showed up like Pac-Man. <laughs> Trust me, brother, I can relate. Amen. When they said it's done, huh? I made a run for it. So today, the question is, what kind of noise are you making? How about you young people? What kind of noise are you making about Jesus out there? What about your workplaces? What about your family? What kind of noise are you making about Jesus? Or are you just making a noise on Sunday and Wednesday? He deserves every day. To make about noise about Jesus, Bible studies, prayer meetings, encounters like that, you'll get stronger and stronger and stronger. Because Jesus will never fail. You may not go to tribes or to dark places where the Lord sends us, but we're headed to Red Lake, Minnesota, where they said it could not be done. 
But I prayed 11 years in the name of Jesus on those grounds. And a few months ago, 40 below zero, God sent us in to preach the gospel. And a spiritual earthquake happened. Now we're going back doing t tent meeting in Red Lake. Not outside of Red Lake. In Red Lake. Amen. Amen. They don't call me 5-0 or muskrat. They said, get a hold of an earthquake. <laughs> See if you can make it. An earthquake is what's needed to happen. But are you tilting the ground? What's destroying tribes and people today? The bitterness and unforgiveness in their heart. They don't tilt it out. Sometimes it takes something. Just hear something or smell something or see something to let it manifest. Lord, I need to tilt my heart today. Maybe he's leading you to do something. But you said, God didn't give a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. I'm going to share a story, then I'm going to close. Low Brewer, South Dakota, they sent for me. In a blizzard, I drove. When I got there, they had a program set up. <laughs> but I showed up with God's agenda. Amen. The leader was talking to me, and the first four that came through the door, he went, nah. They were drunks. And I was saying, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Yeah. But the fifth one was the mama holding a cane. Then four got saved that night. Hey, and I asked the pastor, can I use your couch to sleep because the blizzard's pretty bad tonight. I'll drive home tomorrow. He said, go ahead. I laid on my couch. He's getting phone calls left and right. And he hung up. He said, can I ask you something? I said, yeah. I'll get rid of all the programs if you can preach one more night. Let's do it. So next morning, he went to all leaders, come meet this evangelist from Oklahoma. When he got there, they couldn't find him. Because when I had a little talk with Jesus that morning, he told me to go across the lake where evil's happening and knock on doors. When I came back, he was frustrated, angry. He said, I had a lot of leaders here to meet you. We could not find you. Where was you at? I was at a beer party. What? I was at a beer party. When I knocked on the door, that girl answered, turned and said, Papa. I said, who is it? It's a preacher, and he's a native. He stood up and said, everybody put the whiskey up, put the beer up, turn off the radio, bring them to the table back here. And I spent three hours with them sharing the gospel. And they all came to church that night and got saved. Amen. He said, how, that's evil places. How in the world did you survive that place? Well, I ministered at Roberts County Jail, and I didn't know that majority of them was from the area. And they went back and said, Mama, you got to hear about this big preacher we had an encounter with. He was from Oklahoma. He was muskrat. Then here I'm coming, knocking on the doors a few months later. Amen. When you tilt the ground, it's powerful. When you break the ground, you can't throw the seed unless you tilt the ground. If you're trying to pray for somebody to get saved, you try to pray for your family member or community, why don't you tilt the ground first with mercy and love? And Lord will reign righteousness. So tonight, today, can we all stand? Yeah. Have the music players come on up. That little girl can flat sing. <laughs> I looked at LJ and said, is that really her singing? <laughs> you know, we, you could come today. Maybe you're struggling. Maybe you're having a battle, but... The harvest field is ready. Fort, Fort Smith is a big harvest. Amen. A big harvest. It's ready. Yes. Did y'all hear that? The harvest is ready, yes. but where's the labors? Yeah. It starts with you coming to the Lord saying, here I am. Here I am. I want to do something for your kingdom. I want to do something for my family, my community, my church. 
today you can come and turn to the Lord and go make noise about him outside these four walls. Pray before you go in Walmart. Pray before you go in McDonald's. Pray before you go in the house or your workplace or your school. Seek the Lord first and say, use me in a mighty way in this building. Are you ready for Jesus? Because the greatest thing you can hear today, your sins are forgiven. And we all have loved ones that's on meth, that's in bondage. Do you believe the Lord can save them? I shouldn't have to tell you, come pray for the loss or the harvest. It should be a burden on all Christians who want to see everybody saved. How did you show up today? How much noise you've been making about Jesus? Or have you been slacking? You know, not reading the Bible like you used to. Not coming to church like you used to. Just going through the day your way. Nothing happens. The Lord made this day, amen? amen. The Lord's a provider, amen? amen. Muskrat, how do you travel all nation to nation? Faith. Faith. To go out there and give hope. Even in dark times, I still want to make noise about him. I still want to praise him. Even my struggles and my failures, Lord, help me. Help me. So if you got that to pray about, can you pray for the tribes we're heading to? Can you pray for us? Can you do that? Can you pray for yourself and pray for each other? We're brothers and sisters of Christ. We're all from the same dirt pile. There ain't no different dirt here. I didn't go past eighth grade, but I tell you what, I was a chicken catcher 16 years. But now, I'm an evangelist 21 years. And I want to do as much as I can for my Lord. I didn't give up on six years today because, you know, I make noise about Jesus. No matter what, I came to the call. I came to the table and made noise about Jesus. We had a great time. What if I didn't obey? What if I didn't listen? It just said, it's your problem. It's sad to say that's the way leaders are today. It's your problem. But these guys I love so much that I'm not giving up on them. Not giving up. And LJ's carrying it on. You keep calling them every morning. <laughs> but I'm blessed to have them today. Because God put this team together today. To accomplish this today. So today, come on. Go ahead. The greatest thing you can do. Let's call on Jesus. How many today is going to perish in Fort Smith? In your family, your community. When the Lord said, bring it to me. Bring it to me. Whose name you can carry today? Whose healing? you can bring today I can't walk without holding his house I can you say Jesus I would do Lee come on come on let's pray for Fort Smith it's time to have an earthquake it's time to have an earthquake Come on! Not today, Satan! Not tomorrow! Because I'm bringing it to Jesus. I come to make a noise about Jesus. I come to praise Him.
The blind beggar was on the side of the road, hollering at the son of them. And they told him, be quiet back there. He got louder. It stopped Jesus. And Jesus said, bring him to me. Whose name you can carry today? Who is it to pray? For deliverance. The Lord said, Come on. Come on. Come on. Maybe you're struggling. Maybe you're not running well like you used to. Jesus can help you. Jesus can help you. Come and fall down. Here I am, Lord. Here I am. Here I am. You that one the Lord wants to use in a mighty way. Start making a noise about Jesus. This is the altar. This is where you bring it to Jesus. I promise tomorrow when I promise the next hour the harvest is ready in Fort Smith because I broke ground in Fort Smith I drove around in Fort Smith in the name of Jesus Lord, what church you want to use? Then I come to the Bible bookstore. Then the Lord reveals what church is going to flood Fort Smith. If you, if you need Jesus, if you do not know him, I want you to come up to the front. I want you to come up, come up to the front. You mean business with God. Come move and step out to the altar and come up to the front. The Lord is doing something. If you have a heart for this city and you want to see the city on its knees, I want you to run up here and come up here right now. God's moving. God's causing burdens. And I want you to come up here right now. You mean business with God. Forget about the person to the left. Forget about the person to the right. It doesn't matter about the opinions of men. Come up here. Come up right now in Jesus' name. There's a few of you that are here, and you know your heart is pounding. I'm talking to you. Run up here. Brother, run up here. Give your heart to Jesus. You're not promised tomorrow. Come on. The Lord's doing something. The Lord's doing something. Hallelujah. We thank you for moving hearts. Father, we thank you for burdens in Jesus' name. I thank you for deliverances. I thank you for healings. I thank you for salvations. Souls being saved in Jesus' name. Come up. Receive salvation. Come up and get delivered in the name of Jesus. Woo! You are somebody to God. You are somebody to God. Don't walk away today. Run to Jesus today. The fifth 
only jailer left his house, it was on his way to the jailhouse. But he didn't know he was coming to a spiritual earthquake. Paul Silas prayed and started singing at midnight. And there was an earthquake where he ended up saying, What must I do to be saved? Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and that you'll be saved and the house. Fork Smith's a big house. Lord can save Fort Smith. Do you believe that? You know, I, I know that most everybody in this house has a heart to see this city come to Jesus. God is doing a special, special work in a number of people here. But I believe this whole house desires that this city come to Jesus, that this area come to Jesus. Amen? Amen. Here's what I want you to do. I want you, I don't, I want you to just make some step of faith, just a little symbolic step of faith. I want you to step into the aisle <clears throat> or step forward, whatever, whatever. Just take a step of faith. Will you do that? Step into the aisle or step up forward, whatever. Just take a step of faith. And we're going to pray for the city. We're going to believe. And then I'm going to share with you for just a few minutes. This is a very special day. How many of you can sense God's doing something special today? That God sent Vivo here to break up some fallow ground. Praise God for that. Father, we pray for this city right now. Lift it up. Lift it up. Father, we pray for this city right now. We pray for this area right now, this trade area. The Lord, just, just as Jimmy was speaking about praying over the city, we join him in agreement. We join in agreement right now for this city. Principalities and powers that have bound up this city and this trade area must flee in Jesus' name. And the love of Jesus comes flooding in. We give you glory, Lord. We thank you for that power that's going to change this city. We give you glory, Lord. We give you glory. We give you glory. Yours is the power. Yours is the glory. Yours is the majesty. We give you glory, Lord. We give you glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Be seated for a few minutes. If you're still in the altar praying, you feel free to go ahead. <clears throat> We're going to do something we haven't done about, I guess, about two and a half, three years now. We're going to pass the plate here in a minute. Now, I want you to uh, get your gifts ready. Because we want to help Jimmy and his team. And this is part of them. There are a number of people involved in ministry with him. He, Jimmy, want to, come, come up here with me just a minute. I want you to tell the story about the woman that, in, that asked you to pray for her family to be saved. And you walk, you don't want to stop. I was in South Dakota, and the nursing home said an elder. Let me, let me say this. If you're making a check, make it to Victory Church. We'll make one check for the whole amount to his ministry. So just go ahead and be getting your gifts ready. So I, I visit her, and, you know, the song we sung, me and the group, I can't walk without holding your hands. She wanted to hear that song. So I sung it to her. And when I got done singing, you could feel the, the power, the anointing. Oh, man, it was so powerful. And she said, can we pray right now? I said, yes, we can. She said, I want to pray for my whole family to be saved. I said, let's do it. So we prayed. And then when I left, three days later, elders put up, pulled up and said, we need you at Big Cooley. Get in the back seat. I said, okay. They said the next preacher shows up, they're going to kill him. <laughs> okay. So Paul said, work out your own salvation with trembling fear. I had trembling fear, but I still obeyed the Lord and jumped in. And when we got there, they snuck me through the back door and they hid me. And they said, we'll come get you when we're ready. At 1 o'clock in the morning, the elder woman stood up and said, don't touch him. 
Don't do nothing to him. Let him speak. It's something about north. When elders speak, they obey the elders. That's missing here on our side. When I stood up, I didn't know it was a wake service. Guess who was in the casket? It was her. I didn't know that she passed away the next day when I left. And I sung her favorite song. And the Lord said, don't be afraid. I'm with you. And I stood up. Church, the whole building got saved that night. The Lord answered her prayer. We still can see that today in our houses, in Fort Smith, in our community. But do you believe? Do you believe? I've seen miracles in dark places. And I seen a miracle that night. They were hollering, was stay, was stay. Means good. And they said, fix a table, let's feed him. It's amazing how the Lord can turn things around. And it's amazing how he answered prayers. Lord answered her prayer. Her whole family got saved that night. So I want to share that with you. And just keep us in prayer. You know, God bless y'all. We're going to pray for you and your team. I also want us to pray for Chris and Suli. Uh, we haven't really talked about it that much, but Chris and Suli will leave tomorrow with Juan Berrios and be going to Mexico for a mission there. This, um, this mission that they're going on is actually self-funded. It's not funded by the church. Uh, Chris has a ministry called um, Father's Glory. Father's Glory. I almost like Father's House. <laughs> Father's Glory. And those that give to that have funded the trip. So it's actually self-funded. But I, I was... Uh, and have, have your, thank you, let me just say this first. Thank you for your giving of tithes. Thank you for your giving toward missions. Thank you for all that you do. And you know that we've kept our offering receptacles at the foyer welcome desk, and we have the, the alms box there. But I felt that today we should pass the plate. I just felt that in my spirit uh, for Jimmy's ministry. Um, but well, I was driving home last night. I know we're running a little bit late, but just be patient with me. This is a special day. There's something really special. Um, I was driving home last night from Roland where we had a, a follow-up youth rally to camp uh, that, that Woodland Hills uh, put on. Tremendous, tremendous move of God there. And I was driving home, and we've had requests for funding from Jim Mackey because of, of he's, he's not able to travel as much as he was, so it's difficult for him to raise the funds for the schools and such in Nigeria and China and such. So we had a request, if we could afford to, to help there. We had a request from Ed Huey, and um, then Chris and Suli are going on this mission. Um, and they, they haven't asked for anything. Nothing. But I was driving home, and, and the Lord, and because I thought, well, we can't really, can't really afford to do these things right now because all of you know the giving has been down because, since COVID, and it's just been, it's been a little different from what we've known in the past. We've always been able to give out of our abundance. And the Lord, as I drove home last night, and I was praying and thinking about how I wish we could... <clears throat> Bless these ministries that were reaching out to us, but really the, we're a little more contained and, and restrained financially than what we have been. The Lord spoke this to me. He said, you've always given out of your abundance. Now give out of your need. Plant a seed out of your need. And you've always taught that. You've always preached that. You've always practiced that. Now the church needs to practice that. Now I didn't tell Chris what I was doing because I wanted to surprise him. I want us to give. 
I want us to plant some seeds today. We're going to plant the seed of this offering today to Jimmy. These envelopes represent it. We're going to plant another seed toward Ed Huey's ministry. We're going to plant a seed toward um, the trip, Chris. And we're going to plant a seed in Jim Mackey's ministry. And these are significant seeds. These, uh, and I've sprung this on the board. I had Christine just to ask the board for permission to do this today because we're talking about several thousand dollars. And we do this today because we're planting seeds out of our need. Now, I would expect, and I, and I asked Christine and Anna, let me know when this happens because I want to share this testimony. I expect that the Lord is going to multiply the seed that we plant today 10, 15, 20 times or more coming back to us. I am, Jimmy, it's, it's, it's no mistake that Jimmy comes to us today and he's talking to us about Fort Smith and so forth. He knew none of this. The Lord spoke to me a couple of months, several months ago and said, cast the word. I hadn't had a chance until I br mentioned it briefly here. I haven't really had a chance to share it with the board until last week. The Lord said to cast the word. A year ago, the Lord spoke to me and said we would need X number of dollars when it came time for revival in Fort Smith. And as he began to unfold this about cast the word, because I didn't know what he was talking about. I just heard that in my spirit. Then he said, that's why you need the money. That's why I said you would need $50,000. We are going to, and I plan to raise more money than that, not all in the church, outside the church as well. We are going to do, Jimmy, the largest evangelism blitz campaign that this city has ever seen, ever in its history. We're going to do the largest evangelism campaign from this church that the city has ever seen, that this area has ever seen. And it's going to be about casting the word. You're not going to be able to drive through the city without seeing a billboard about it. You're not going to be able to turn on your radio. You're not going to be able to turn on your television. You're not going to be able to look at social media without, without seeing and hearing it constantly. It's going to cost a lot of money to do it. But the Lord spoke to me that same week, and he said, The salvation of America lies within, is locked up, is locked up in the bank accounts of Americans. The salvation of the world is locked up in the bank accounts of Americans. It takes money to do it. Um, it has to be rooted, it has to be founded in, in prayer. But it will take money to do it. And so we're planting this seed toward that today. And just to give you, just to tell you how we're going to do that, we're going to have a central website. It's going to have the names, and it's going to have uh, all sorts of helps. It's going to have teaching. It's going to have where they can sign up for classes, not just here, but in partnering churches. And it's going to have social agencies as well that we know are operated by Christians. And, and it doesn't have to be a Christian agency, but we know there are Christians involved. And we're going to touch this city with the love of God like it's never been touched. Most people don't realize that about 100 years ago, Fort Smith saw tremendous revivals. Tremendous revivals in this city. And uh, there were even situations where there were revivals where businessmen came and, be, and got saved. There were revivals where people come from all over the city and literally one, one night, it broke out of the building it was in. There used to be a huge coliseum down where, about where the jail is. And it broke out of that. They marched down Garrison Avenue, went into the bars and saloons, and brought people out, and the people got saved. There were, I don't know if you realize this, there were at one time 60 bars and saloons up and down Garrison Avenue. And they had tremendous revival. I say a hundred years later, it's time for revival again in Fort Smith. So, 
I want you and your team to come. I want Chris and Suli to come. I want our elder board members that are here to come, uh, staff, uh, Odell, Pam, uh, uh, Jessica, all, all staff. I don't, I don't want to name everybody, but elders and staff, come on up. I want you to, I want you to face them that we're going to be praying for, okay? You just come on up and face these that we're going to be praying for. Now let's believe God. And I'm also going to bring these four. These represent gifts to Jim's, Jim's ministry, Ed's ministry, this uh, trip to Mexico that starts tomorrow, and Jimmy's ministry. And we're going to believe God to do great things. I'm going to place these envelopes as seeds right here on this book of heaven, on this Bible. And we're going to believe God to multiply this seed. We're not giving uh, for that purpose. It's just what God does. It's just what God does. I want you to stretch your hand toward those right now. Just stretch, stretch your hands toward them. And let's believe God to minister powerfully, powerfully. Thank God for protection and anointing over Chris and Suli as they go, over Jimmy and the team as they go for these ministries that they have, that they will be continuing. If you feel led, just come on up and pray. Feel free to do that right now. Feel free to, if you feel like, oh, I need to be up there, you feel free to go right ahead and step out. And we're going to believe God. Father, thank you. We're, we're planting these seeds today, Lord. And we're giving toward these ministries. And we're believing, God, that you're going to bless all of these efforts, that you're going to magnify these seeds to them, that these seeds, when they're placed in their hand, are going to go much farther than normally they would. And they're going to be multiplied and used greatly. And, Lord, we're believing you're going to give back to this church so that we can give back to this community. And it will be a seed that just keeps growing and reproducing and reproducing fruit on and on and on. And we give you glory for that. Ask me if I could pray over okay. Brother Jimmy. So, Father, I just thank you, Lord, for Jimmy Muskrat. I thank you for Philo. <laughs> Father, I thank you that you would increase your glory and increase the anointing yes. over Philo and the ministry and everything that he touches, Father. I thank you that the light of your glory would reach the darkest of places. I thank you for revival and souls coming into the kingdom of God literally being snatched out from darkness into the glorious light. I thank you for Isaiah chapter 61, for the anointing to break bondages and healing. Father, we thank you for the salvation of souls and the increase and multiplication of discipleship and ministry across not only this nation, but all of the nations, the, the Native American nations, and also the nations of the world. Father, we thank you for your anointing and your increase. I speak increase and multiplication over his ministry. Everything that he touches, that there would be provisions and prosperity by the spirit for the gospel. Multiplication and preaching, multiplication and evangelism, multiplication and discipleship, multiplication and everything. That it would truly be for the glory of God in Jesus' name. I saw give, and it shall be given unto you. And you have given to the Lord that voice, and souls have been brought forth unto the kingdom. And he says, there will be more. As you give, it will be given more, pressed down and shaking together and running over, because your heart is pure, and you do have something to speak and yell and declare before man. You declare my glory. And all that you do will be blessed because you will have a, a fountain that runs over. And sa I see salvations. I see deliverances. I see. And it is such a pleasure to the heart of God because you are doing it unto his glory. And I continue to speak the work of the spirit and transformation into your lives because whom the son has set free is free is indeed. I thank you for the anointing of the Spirit upon all of your lives and that you continue. Do not believe the lies of anything that the enemy throws at you. Believe truth 
and truth alone. And the truth has made you free. Yeah. Declare it and walk in it in Jesus' name. Um, I think he told me this prayer to order about a little while. Father, I thank you for the anointing that you have placed upon Chris and Suley for this ministry and over Juan. I do not leave Juan out, Father, because they are going as a team. I thank you for that anointing that goes into a new found place. I thank you that you go before them and you make the way straight. You give them protection and, and you lead them by your spirit. I thank you for salvations. I thank you for a ma mighty move of the of spirit in this area. Father, I thank you that you are going to, your word is going to be declared. And, and, oh, I see hearts melting under your word. And I see many salvations. And we give you glory right now for all that you will accomplish in this time. I thank you, Father. Oh, yes, there will be. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We're going to pray for Cheryl. I, when she was sharing in, that she's had a battle on and off, uh, the Lord just just encouraged me to have Christine pray for her. And uh, Christine, that's Christine right there. Christine was a meth addict and a meth dealer. Christine, I want you to give them at least one case of your books to take with them as they go. And God set her free in an instant. Cheryl, is that right? Yes. Cheryl, the Lord impressed me with this as you spoke. That this time is not like any other time. Amen. You'll never go back again. Amen. You'll never go back again. There's, there's a freedom that is complete. That is absolutely complete today. How many of you can believe that? Pass the plate. Pass the plate. We're going to receive your offering real quickly. Thank you for your patience. Let me ask you to do this. When we dismiss in just a moment, when we dismiss in just a moment, go get your kids immediately because we're later than normal and thank their teacher for their patience. Okay? Be sure and thank them for their patience. And go get them right away. Sometimes we leave them a little bit longer than we should because it's nice to fellowship and let the teachers babysit, but that's really not what they're supposed to do. So go get the kids quickly and thank them for their patience this morning. And thank, thank you for being here. It's been good to be in the house of God today. It has been good to be in the house of God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Everybody stand up. Turn to your neighbor and say, God is. God is, God is good.